The battle of I-80 wasn't much of a battle. The Warriors, for the second straight night, score 137. They lead wire to wire against the Sacramento Kings, win their second straight on the seven-game homestand. And Steph Curry messed around and almost got a triple-double. He was special again tonight, following up that performance last night against the Blazers, where he scored 62 points. Fonte Hill, Chris Mullen, Darrell Wright, and they got off to a hot start. The first quarter scored 37, and they never looked back, Mully. Total domination. Offensively, a beautiful game to watch. Everyone got a piece of the pie. And then defensively, what Steve Kerr's been talking about, they're totally connected on defense as well. So this, like you said, about the wire-to-wire domination and a great carryover momentum game from the second game against Portland Trailblazers, Darrell. Yeah, just like what Mully said, great carryover, total domination. These guys got everything they wanted, got to their spots, uh, got everything at the rim, got everything at the three-point line. Uh, just a great game, they, a, a total 48 mini game they put together, and I think they did a great job on both ends. And Draymond Green back on the defensive end and offensive end makes so much of a difference energy-wise and communication. But you just see the beautiful ball hand, 41 assists to 51 <laughs> made field goals. The Kings, I'm going to say they tried to play defense, <laughs> but whatever they did, whether it was the zone right. or man-to-man, -man, the Warriors just moved the ball beautifully. Yes. Again, I think you're seeing the impact of Draymond Green right. uh, on both sides of the ball, but offensively, putting all these guys in the proper positions, you just see, the, and, and the assist totals are a big indicator with the yep. Warriors' offense. Sure. 41 assists, the most in the league this season. Yep. yep. Beautiful offensive basketball. Beautiful game. You know, it was beautiful, man. It's like you said, the Kings weren't trying. I don't know if they were practicing social distancing or not. I'm, I'm serious. They didn't defend. They didn't do anything uh, right today. Poor Luke Waltman is up there stressing. Let's talk about Steph Curry, though, because he's been a man of the hour, Western Conference Player of the Week for the 15th time in his career. And look, 30 points tonight, nine rebounds, eight assists. He was just special again. Nine of 18, efficient. Five threes, got to the lane. He missed some open shots, too. Yeah. Could have had a bigger night, but Steph Curry right now, Darrell is on the terror. Yeah, he's still hot, and you love to see him, you know, do it from three levels like we talked about pregame. And he did a great job being a playmaker and taking whatever the defense gave him. He didn't have to force anything. Uh, some great moves out there around the perimeter with, <laughs> with Bagley on him, man. Step back. So he did a great job being a playmaker and, and just doing everything tonight. Just just a great all-around game coming back off 62 points I thought his floor game was was beautiful and what it was really impressive on the offensive end you saw the split action yep. you saw him attack off the dribble and he didn't have to hunt shots because the the offense is starting to flow you're starting to see him give the ball up guys know when to screen for him and when you have Draymond Green playing that point forward spot he's always looking to get Steph uh, extra looks. No doubt he was smooth tonight with the three-pointers, with the passing, and then you mentioned Draymond Green. Just a solid all-around game since he's been back. The second straight game where he's got his win back. Defensively, he's active. He even hit a three-pointer there in that first quarter. Here it is right here. Nothing but net. Draymond Green a plus 13 in the plus-minus department, but it's just more than a box score when you watch Draymond Green play. Yeah. Good, Darrell. I'm sorry. He does a lot of stuff that doesn't show up in the stat sheet. You know, uh, always in position on the def defensive end. Uh, rebounds always has always have his head up right here with a great pass to the young fella and right here these guys have been doing this for years now so he, I think he did a great job with playmaking and a great job being an anchor on the def defensive end and we all know Draymond he's just a winner he's going to do what it takes to win basketball games but his unique skill is to be able to play point forward and impact the game without scoring now tonight he had five assists he was beautiful on the defensive end uh, again the give and go with Steph Curry, just the, the chemistry that they have from playing together, giving in the post, give right back, getting his teammates easy baskets, uh, his communication on the defensive end. And I think he, he embodies what Kelly Oubre did the first five, six games. No doubt. Impact the game. If you're not shooting the ball, it doesn't matter. Do something else to help us win. And that's what Draymond Green has always done for this Warrior sure. team. Good to have him back in the lineup here as the Warriors get ready for the Clippers. That'll be a fun one. They play the Clippers on Wednesday and Friday. But let's hear from the head coach of the Warriors, Steve Kerr, on tonight's wider wire win over the Sacramento Kings. When Draymond Green is playing at that intensity level, uh, especially that stretch in the second quarter where I think he is, what, four or five assists. Uh, how impactful is that on the offense, both on the uh, players' feet off? Yeah. Well, he's the best defensive player in the world. I mean, he, he's he's been doing this for a long time. He impacts the game so dramatically. Uh, and then on offense, he gets us organized. You know, he's he's kind of our point forward in a lot of ways, and and uh, he's our the leader of our team. So. 
you know, the first uh, first few games, obviously, we desperately missed him. Um, and it just feels to me like, you know, now that both Draymond and, and James Wiseman have uh, had a, a couple weeks work here, it, this feels like the beginning of the regular season to me. You know, we, we weren't ready the first couple weeks and it showed, but we knew that coming in based on uh, just our, our situation in camp. So i um, really happy with the way the guys um, handled this, this last week. Um, we've gotten better. We're starting to feel uh, what kind of team we can become. And uh, they had a good night tonight. So it's, uh, they get, get tomorrow off. They've earned it. Steve, CJ Peterson, San Francisco Examiner. Um, tonight you guys had 41 assists, season high so far. Um, what did you think of the ball movement out there and just how you guys were able to kind of facilitate tonight? Yeah, it was it was really good, you know, just um, driving, kicking, and, and um, you know, it just seemed like everybody was was in sync um, and understood that you just move the ball on. You, you know, you put it on the floor, get it in the paint, and move it on to the next guy and the game becomes much easier. So that was, um, that was nice to see. Steve, the, the wrap that we see on Steph's back and, and the wrap around his right quad, are those just maintenance things? I mean, I, ha yeah. I have to ask, but yeah, he's okay. fine. It's just, just maintenance stuff. Okay. How good was it to see Ubre uh, hit four threes? Yeah, you know, it, it's uh, it was just a matter of time. I mean, he's a you know he's a good three point shooter. I think he was thirty five percent last year in Phoenix, and and uh, he shot it well in the preseason. And just one of those things. Um, I think I've I said this to you guys last week. Um, this kind of start, um, Clay Thompson has had has had a similar start at least two times, maybe even three times uh, since I've been here. Um, Sometimes at the beginning of the season, you just don't have your legs under you. Uh, you have a couple bad games that can snowball, and then all of a sudden you make one and you you realize there's 67 games left or whatever it is, and, and you, you just relax. And I think that's that's where Kelly is now. Steve, uh, Karin Laterno, San Francisco Chronicle. Is it fair to say that it's not really a coincidence that Steph starts to go off when Draymond gets his win back and his being the drama on the board. What is what is it, what is so special about the dynamic between them, between those two? Well, they know each other so well. So they, their their pick and roll game is is um, is beautiful to watch, and and uh, you know head and handbacks. And Draymond understands how to get Steph open. And then I think our defense gets a lot better when Draymond is on the floor. So Steph gets more transition opportunities as well. Hey, Coach Kylan with Cron Four. Um, Steph almost with a triple double tonight. Uh, what do you think of his effort, especially coming off of a 62 point game to then go out with that kind of energy? Yeah, Steph looked great. I mean, the first quarter was the key to the game, you know, 37 to 20. And uh, our defense was was really key. And um, again, if we can get stops and get into transition, uh, Steph is lethal uh, in those cases. So. He got free a little bit uh, in that first quarter and set a set a really good tone, as did our whole team with the defense and uh, and that's going to be the key, you know, uh, going forward. We, we these last two games have been really good defensive efforts, and um, that's what. <laughs>
what this team has to be built on in order to, to compete at the mm -hmm. highest level. So we're trending in the right direction, but it's about to get a lot tougher uh, competition-wise. You, um, you know, you talked about not really having a rotation early in the season. I know we're not 20 games into it yet, yeah. but do you feel like you're forming one? I mean, uh, obviously, Bazemore is getting more minutes. Lee is a nightly guy now. Just wh where are you at rotation-wise? Yeah, I mean, I, I think Bays has played so well. He's really uh, solidified himself. And then, you know, ironically, um, Marquise's injury really clarified Eric's role. And I think that was one of the big question marks in camp was, um, you know, when Draymond was back, uh, where were we going to play Eric? And uh, he's really seized that, that role, that uh, backup center along with Loon. Um, you know, kind of playing th those three guys, play playing James, Loon, and, and Eric, and it's a it's a really good look. You know, Eric is so good offensively and so so good at attacking, and doing so as a five man um, really suits him well. So, I would say, you know, this these last few games, the rotation has uh, settled in pretty well. Um, but you know, we'll see how it goes the next couple of weeks. You mentioned the increased competition. Um, you know, you guys played some really good teams to start the season, clearly weren't ready for that. How much more ready do you feel for, for really, it's like a seven game gauntlet uh, ahead? Well, yeah. I mean, like, like I said, I, I feel like conditioning wise and practice wise, um, this is what the beginning of the regular season normally feels like. And it, it makes sense, right? Cause it's, you know, it's, it's about a four week period under normal circumstances, uh, from your first practice to your first game. And it's probably been about four weeks um, since we started camp. So uh, we just, we weren't ready. We needed a couple of extra weeks, particularly with James and, and Draymond. And uh, now we've got our legs underneath us. And uh, I think we're much better prepared to play uh, the best teams in the league. So uh, we'll see if that's true. We'll see it Wednesday night when the Warriors take on the Clippers. And these three guys right here, Bully and Darrell, are a big key to the success. We know about Steph Curry and Draymond Green, but Oubre Jr. starting to find it. Andrew Wiggins, he's been playing well ever since the Milwaukee game. And, of course, let's start with James Wiseman, a 19-year-old. Sky's the limit for this kid, 50% from the floor tonight. And he just gets better and better and better. I know a lot of fans were saying, well, where's Wiseman at? Playing more in the fourth quarter. He's elevated himself. He doesn't need to be playing at garbage time anymore because he's that special, Darrell. Yeah, he's, he's a great-looking player, man. The Warriors are definitely blessed to have this kid. And just to see him out here learning on the go, He's just going to have to get more and more reps. He's going to get better and better, especially playing with these great leaders and these great players. So he's in great hands. Like he's just got to continue to keep working and continue to keep learning. He's got incredible athleticism, great hands. His skill set is unlimited, and he's fitting in perfectly. As this team has progressed, he's progressed with them. And, like, you know, as Steve Kerr mentioned in his comments, it's been a steady progress, right? You had your missing Draymond. And, and, and Wiseman for the preseason, that had an effect yep. on, on Oubre and Wiggins. No doubt. As those guys got back healthy, this team, you see natural progression. They're, they're improving each and every day. And uh, tonight was just, just a beatdown. I mean, an offensive show. They yeah. shot 52% from the field. It's crazy. 53 from three and 85 from the free throw line. 23 Start 43. to finish beatdown. Yeah, yeah 21, 21 assists. assists. 41 assists. 41 assists. Time. Sacramento didn't yeah. even show up, but the Warriors took it to them. Mm -hmm. They just said, look, we're going to beat you guys. You're inferior. You're inferior competition. We're going to take it to you and follow it up against Portland. And Kelly Oubre Jr. and Bully is starting to follow up some solid performances. Thought he played well Sunday night against the Blazers. Tonight, four or six from the three-point line. But it's his defensive activity that's really spurring his offense. And he didn't let his shooting struggles affect his defensive yes. intensity and his impact on winning. Mm -hmm. and, and there's not a better coach in the league than Steve Kerr. He always has tremendous perspective and humility. He knew what he was going through. They took some beat downs, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't overreact. He knew he was getting guys yeah. back. He knew it was early in the season. And Steve's always had that perspective, right? Even when things were, when they were blowing teams out, he said, this is not the real NBA, right? 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 Yeah. So he, he knows how to work through seasons. Yeah. And I thought, you know, his temperament helped Kelly Oubre yes. and Andrew Wiggins through that tough, through that tough start. Yeah, and he, 
he's playing with these guys that struggled before, and I'm pretty sure Steph and all those guys are telling him, just continue to shoot, continue to play your game. Right. You heard what Draymond said about him post-game, just doing the little things, the defensive end, and getting steals, creating offense for yourself, getting dunks. So I think that really, really helped him tonight, you know, knocking down four out of six threes, and he looked like a lot of confidence on them shots. And not to forget about Andrew Wiggins. He's now in a nice little rhythm here yes. offensively, especially coming off the bench with that second unit at the start of the second quarter. So Wiggins playing well. Warriors playing well. They dropped 137 uh, in back-to-back -back nights. They are coming along very, very nicely. We'll continue to talk more about this victory here on Warriors Post Game Live. One assist on 51 made field goals. Again, folks, an NBA season high, 41 assists on 51 made field goals. Early offense, transition, Mully, they were rolling today against the Sacramento Kings. And it was the vets. Draymond had five assists, Steph had eight assists, but look at his beautiful rebound, one dribble, look ahead. Not only a beautiful pass, he knows who he's got on his team. Big 7-1, 7-5 wingspan, James Wise, a nice catch and finish. Beautiful pass by Draymond. Oh, yeah, they were sharing the wealth tonight, man. Here, here's Draymond again. Uh, very underrated move, getting the ball to the middle of the court so you can see the whole floor. Kelly Oubre running hard, knowing he will be rewarded if he runs. Beautiful post defense. Steal it, push it up, spoon feed Kelly Oubre. Here again, knowledge, point forward, Draymond Green directing traffic. Beautiful screen by James Wiseman. Wide open play here, beautiful, unselfish oh, yeah. play by Steph Curry. That's going to be a staple moving forward. For sure. you see a lot of that right there. Right here, Willen and Dillon finding Pascal in the corner. Hands ready, shot it with confidence. This was a great shot and got him going, I think, early. And that's what Steve Kerr's talking about, attack the paint to finish. And, yeah, Draymond's excited. What is he doing there? Is he waving them home? That's, what is he doing, Draymond? What is that? Point forward. Go screen number 30. Screen. Screen. Him. screen. I want to know another assist. Go get him over there. Please. Warriors rolling with the assist numbers is crazy because last week against the Bulls, the Pistons, and even against Milwaukee and uh, Brooklyn, we're talking about the assist numbers, 15 assists, 14 assists, and we're saying that's not Warriors basketball. Right. Having Draymond Green back in the lineup, I didn't think he'd make this big of an impact. We know he's a Hall of Famer and a former DPOI, but the assist numbers are now back to the 30s where the Warriors like it, Darrell. Yeah, because they're sharing the ball, they're spacing the floor out, and they're understanding the IQ of the game. So pass and cut. Cut hard. Steph passes the ball or pick up his dribble. The play isn't over. That means yep. pass the ball one more time, <laughs> set a down screen just like Mully just said, and he's going to knock down open shots. And everybody else is taking shots with confidence as yep. well. So that's helping the assist numbers uh, also. And no other sport than basketball, one player makes a huge difference. And with yeah. Draymond Green coming back, yeah, offensively and defensively, he, make, he makes a huge difference. He puts all the other players in their proper positions, yes. right? So now Wiseman can play in the dunker, mm -hmm. Steph can run off screens, and Draymond can handle the basketball. Defensively, we've seen him take charges, get steals. And the other thing, too, is he's a great advancer of the basketball. So when he, when he rebounds that ball, he's pushing it up quickly. Yeah, he's right putting that defense on their heels, yes. and that's where a lot of great opportunities are. So there's no coincidence that with him coming back, yeah, the defense has improved. Yep. The offensive crew because of just the positive energy that he brings. Right. And he's waving him home. Yeah. Come on, Curry, yeah, yeah. come on. Quarterback. Let's talk about his quarterback <laughs> out there. Shout out to E40. Storylines here. We talked about the Sacramento Kings and their family feud. Let's look at the point total for a second. Uh, they were over, over under 118 and a half. Then they come close to that. We'll talk about that in a second here. Marvin Bagley, the third, and De'Aaron Fox. We talk about the family feud with the fathers tweeting out. Of course, Bagley's dad tweeted, trade my son, trade him. De'Aaron Fox's dad, Aaron Fox.
accepted. We'll trade them. We don't care. Well, you look at the stats here. Marvin Bagley the third was awful tonight. Minus 27, of course. He had a really slow first half. De'Aaron Fox really didn't get to a flow. The jumper was off. The Warriors didn't allow him to get into the paint. The family feud, we'll see what happens to Sacramento, man, but it looks ugly. And if you do want to trade Marvin Bagley the third, who are they going to get for him for the number two overall pick? Think about this, Darrell. Number two overall picks, Wiseman and Marvin Bagley the third. Who would you rather have? You'd probably rather have Wiseman because of the maturity. Yeah, I like the upside as well. Uh, Wiseman coming in, high IQ player already. He's been coached by a great player, a uh, former player. So, uh, and he looks great. You know, he's coming in, he's making a big, big impact early. So, I'm happy to see him every single night. As well as the Warriors played tonight, that's how bad the Kings played. Wow. And I will say, look, De'Aaron Fox and Marvin Bagley, they're both young, very talented players. Mm -hmm. They have enough on their plate to navigate through a team like the Warriors. And the, the mm -hmm. NBA is a hard business to be in. Right, yes. You have enough on your plate just to navigate through your young career. You don't need the outside news. I outside mean, noise. it was all good just a week ago with the Kings beating the Nuggets for the second time in the season. Now they've lost three straight to the Rockets, of course, blown out tonight. Here's my over-unders here. Over-under 18, 118 and a half. And if you bet the under, well, you cash that ticket. The Kings scored 106 and for a while there. Well, they were hovering, hovering around 80 points. They didn't show up. <laughs> I wonder if anyone league. bet back-to-back -back 137 for the Warriors. Right. right, that was impressive. Solid Warriors defense here. And believe it or not, fellas, the Kings were favored by two points to win this basketball game. But the Warriors defense really came and took it to the Kings. Beautiful team defense. Draymond didn't foul. We'll let Wiseman Kenobi come over with the big block. Transition, beautiful three-point shot. Here, once again, kick it ahead. Get an easy basket. That opens up the floodgates for Kelly Oubre. Yeah, and I think they did a great job of making it real hard on uh, Buddy Hill tonight as he turned it over right there. And they didn't let, them, let those guys get comfortable at all. They made Fox be a jump shooter, and they ran Buddy off the line. Look at that pass right that there. That was a nice dime sweet. right there. That is sweet. And and Dray Draymond mentioned in his post-game comments, okay, you defend the three. No, just let's defend. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing goes for offense. Let's not overemphasize the three-point shot. Mm -hmm. Let's get quality shots, take them in rhythm, and your game will come. So I think what Draymond's done on the offensive end and the defensive end, his impact has been incredible. Well, let's hear from Draymond right now. He's at the podium talking to the media. Here's Draymond Green after the Warriors win their second straight. Um, what, what can you say about the defensive energy the last two nights? And, and Steve says he wants that to be the identity for this group. And, and you're a big part of kind of getting that, that going on that end. Uh, that has to be the identity of this group. Um, you know, when, when we're defending like that, we, you know, we can get easy buckets on the other end. Uh, you know, as we continue to figure each other out offensively, uh, figure out where shots are coming from, um, the one thing we can be consistent on is, is our energy and effort on the defensive end. And those, um, you know, those these last two games was a good step in the right direction for us. Now we got to make sure we continue to build on that. You were very demonstrative tonight, um, particularly at one point. You were kind of, you know, I think trying to wave Wiggins through. Um, how important is that for you on this team right now? Try, you know, basically directing guys out there. Uh, it's very important um, because the reality is guys don't know where to go. Um, you know, there's times where I'm out there on the floor and I don't know where to go because we're all figuring each other out. You're figuring out where a guy likes to be on the floor, figuring out the spacing. So. Uh, you know, when there are certain situations, um, you know, it's important that I'm pointing guys in the right direction. Uh, you know, the majority of the time, that leads to stuff flying out off a pin down or something. And when that happens, you know, obviously he creates, I mean, he draws so much attention that he creates better looks for everyone else. So it's important that we continue to get that movement. And, you know, it's, it's, it's even as important, you know, for me to make sure I'm directing that movement and getting guys you know, helping guys get that understanding. Sorry, Go ahead. Does it help you, Draymond, that you're playing in arenas that are pretty quiet and know that the guys can't have a choice but to hear what you're saying? Uh, I don't know, Monty. I'm a pretty loud guy. Uh, <laughs> you know, whether it's an arena full of people or, or one without, you know, my, my voice can, can get up there quite a bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, Ray, see, go, examiner, go ahead, go ahead. tonight you guys had 41 assists. You guys were really uh, distributing the ball tonight. Um, what is that like for you to, you know, kind of see that rhythm kind of come back and see those extra passes really getting in there? Oh, well, I mean, that's, you know, that's who we want to be. Uh, you know, we, we definitely have to use each other's strengths. And, you know, as I said before, as, you know, as we get more comfortable with each other, 
um, you know, we'll be able to see more of this now. Is it going to lead to 41 assists every night and 23 or 24 threes? No. But if that's our MO, moving the ball, making the extra pass, using each other, you know, it'll do it'll do more good than bad for us. And so uh, we just have to make sure we continue to use that, continue to um, – Build on that, and, and more importantly, continue to trust the next guy. Uh, you know, everybody can make a play. If you don't have it, move it on. Trust the next guy. If, if you know, if you got a good shot, and one more swing creates a great one, swing it on. What, what's your impression of Kelly's defensive uh, energy? It's been fantastic. Obviously, um, you know, and watching Kelly over the years, that's who he is. Uh, but playing with him, and the, you know, the energy that he's bringing on the ball, uh, you know. Last couple of nights has really screwed up guys off uh, the other team's offense. And, you know, when you have a guy like that, um, you know, essentially the head of the snake, uh, you know, guarding a point guard and, and taking the head of the snake out the game, uh, that's extremely important. Um, you know, he made it tough on De'Aaron tonight, as he did on, on Dame last night. And, you know, not every night. You can play with that same intensity, and Dame can go berserk. Uh, you know, De'Aaron can go berserk. But nonetheless, as long as he's bringing that effort, you know, it's the NBA. Guys are going to have good nights. But if you're bringing that energy and effort, you know, it's it's great to have that at the point of attack. And now everybody else can kind of fill in and do their job behind them. Uh, Draymond, Connor, Letourneau, San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, Steph's a guy who needs the offense to really be in a flow, to be at his best. Um, how rewarding is it for you when you can play a role in, in making sure that you guys are at the right rhythm and in that flow? Uh, Steph is the flow. Um, yeah. You know, he creates the flow. You know, and so, uh, you know, when he's, when he's playing the way he's playing the last two nights, it allows everyone else to get into a flow. And so I disagree a little bit with he needs the offense to be flowing for him uh he creates the flips after last night's 62 point game how does uh 41 assist sound to you sounds good i mean <clears throat> draymond obviously has helped a lot in terms of getting this organized and you know especially when i get off the ball and starting again i said it yesterday see the pictures a little bit clearer and understand spacing and obviously guys got to make shots and um you know, everybody pitched in, so it was a uh, really good effort across the board. Guys staying ready off the bench. And, you know, defensively, we gave ourselves energy and, and life from the beginning. And on a back-to-back, -back, you need that that presence to get everything flowing. And then it translated to uh, to good offense. Were you Obviously, determined from the start to get your guys involved? I mean, you, last last night you came out looking for the shot. Tonight you came out, you were finding guys, you're looking for, you seem more patient tonight. Again, it's going to look different every night depending on how the defense guards me and, and it's all about just making the right decision. Um, you can always go rogue and try to force up shots, but, you know, yesterday was, there were cl clear lanes to attack and I did. Tonight there weren't, you know, really clear lanes, but I could draw a crowd, get it moving, and I could move it out the ball. So um, it's going to look all type of different ways. I just got to be decisive and and clear. And, and uh, again, having Draymond at the top to kind of be our quarterback and, and get people moving in the right direction, swing the ball, uh, it starts to look like it used to in the sense of –
you know, the patterns that, that we have and guys are, you know, making shots and that that's always helpful. Hi, Steph, Jamie McCauley from AP. Um, Steph, when you watch James uh, at the rim, I mean, with the alley-oop dunk or just, you know, converting a lay, finishing on a lay-in, I mean, he's he seems so poised and, and as if the game is, is coming to him. Does he continue to impress you with, with how he's how he's making adjustments and learning? For sure, I think... Uh... I mean, he showed he showed flashes the very first uh, you know game, being able to kind of catch in space and get to the rim. Um, and when he's aggressive, rolling to the basket, he's going to demand attention, and that opens up a lot of a lot of things. Uh, our timing is getting better by the by the game, um, and then the next step for him will be. When people really load and send bodies at him, knowing where guys are on the weak side and, and creating open shots for other people. So, um, you know, like where he's at, he's he's obviously very aggressive when he gets the ball trying to score. And uh, you, you like that confidence and physicality from a guy that's just getting started. You have several of the league's top teams in the next, like, seven games or so. How much more ready do you feel like this team is for that type of competition than you were for the first two games of the season? I mean, we said it then, and it's going to take, you know, it's a process, and every game, every week, we're going to get better. And we're kind of proving that, but we haven't done anything yet, so we understand that. And um, like you said, there's some tests coming. <clears throat> Portland was... Um, a good bounce back game to make adjustments tonight it was nice to kind of get rid of that trap game kind of mindset and uh follow up a, a good win with another good win and then you got uh you know the clippers coming in so we understand the challenges that they present taking one game at a time stay in the moment we are getting better we are more prepared we're more confident and you know you got to keep uh proving it Steph, to follow up on that you've talked about it in the last few years, getting every team's best shot because of what you guys have accomplished. I know it's early this year and things are a little different, but do you still feel like every time you and this team rolls into a, a town or somebody comes through here that you're getting every team's best shot because of what you've done in years past? 100%, and that's how it's supposed to be. Um you know, there are teams that were in the bubble in the playoffs last year in both conferences that we're going to be doing that to them. So, yeah, it's always a uh, the game within the game. And, and, you know, that competition is, is exciting, knowing that there's a, a little bit more meaning based on what we did in the fi last five years and, um, you know, other teams' experience playing against us. So it's part of the part of the journey. We love it. All right, you just heard from Steph Curry there talking about getting team's best shot and also talked about James Wiseman and what's next for him. And, Willie, he talked about Wiseman getting the ball, seeing the double teams, knowing where guys are going to be at. That's the next phase for him in his game. Well, I think what Steph sees is each and every day in practice and in the game, he sees something new. Yeah. And there's nothing the kid can't do. Yep. Uh, it's just a matter of doing it as the team progresses, right? And Steph talked about they're getting better each and every day, they're progressing, and also they're being more organized. Yeah. I think with the addition of Draymond back in the lineup, now you have Pascal, you have your bench more solidified, yep. and you have your starting lineup solidified. And tonight, you got contributions across the board. Yep. And I gotta say, Kelly Oubre playing through his struggles tonight, four for six from three, yep. but he's been consistently playing yes. hard. Yep. And Andrew Wiggins, another another good performance. Yeah, and I think Wiseman understand that he is now in the scouting report each and every game. So you have to be prepared for defenses throwing all kind of different junk at you. So it like you know more reps, more reps. He understand how to pass out of the out of the uh, double team and who's going to be open on the rotations. And I, I think as they got organized, what you're seeing, he's getting easy baskets. Right. right? He's getting a few more lob dunks mm -hmm. uh, in transition layups, which helps the rest of his game come along. So mm -hmm. it's great just hands. been a great, great progression hands. for the yep. whole team. No, great hands mm -hmm. by Wiseman. Oubre Jr. is coming into his own on-court performance because he is on a heater right now. 92 points in his last seven quarters. Almost had a triple-double tonight. We'll talk about Steph Curry here on Warriors Post Game Live, presented by Toyota. Warriors Post Game Live is presented by Toyota. Wouldn't it? Warriors Post Game Live presented by Toyota. 
and let's look at what the what Steph Curry and Klay Thompson did the night after they scored 60. Remember Klay Thompson in 2016 dropped 60 against the Pacers. He came back with a cool 24 and 35 minutes. Steph Curry almost flirted with the triple double 30 points tonight, nine rebounds, eight assists, and he was all over the floor. All over the floor here as we break his game down. Chris Mullen, Darrell Wright, Bonte Hill. And what Steph has done these last seven quarters is just a reminder of who he is in this league. Yeah, and tonight we saw a typical Warrior offense, 41 assists, and here's their staple of the split action with, with Draymond feeds Kevon Looney, three vets getting back into the old system. Draymond, beautiful screen, wide open Steph Curry, nothing but net. Oh, yeah. Just beautiful to see the old split action working. It's high pick and roll right here. I love the patience right here. He set the guy up. Don't want to get the young fella moving screen, so he had a little patience. He see Bagley. In back position, uses his body to use left hand finish. Nice. He laid a bag of that pretty clean, man. <laughs> once, be again, once again, another great screen by James Wise, but I don't think he's got a moving screen yet. Thank you to Penny Hardaway. Well coached. And here we go. A little moonwalk. Let's dance. There we go. Yeah, Take dance. that. When he's when he's in rhythm like that. There's no stopping Steph Curry. It's hard to guard him. And you talk about following up last night a 62-point performance with the near triple-double 30 points. That's, you know, just incredible skill. But I still go back to his fitness level and yeah. his energy. And uh, just an end-to-end blowout game, but a really nice bounce-back game after last night. Definitely was. And it's, it's pretty cool to see them put two games together, especially with this... Uh, but the, these few teams coming in here, playoff team, so it was good to see them put them together. 92 again in the last seven quarters. He's on fire right now. And as Buki and Fitz said in our pregame show, Steph looks a little stronger. He's going to yeah. the rack. He's getting to the free throw line, and he's finding his spots. And got Marvin Bagley third dancing there. <laughs> Marvin Bagley third, not looking good these last 48 hours. But it's all about Steph Curry, the Western Conference Player of the Week for their 15th time in his career. He looks like he's might, he might get Western Conference Player of the Month with the way he's going right now, Mully. Well, and he's going to play. Play against a great team. We got the Clippers coming in for a back to back. So it's going to be another great test. Let's see if they can keep the momentum going. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. They're going to throw everything at him, especially with Paul and Kawhi. So it's going to be definitely a good good show to see what he what he does. What about Pat Bev? You know Pat Bev Pat gets Bev. up for this challenge. <laughs> Can't forget about Pat Bev. <laughs> Can't forget about we talk about Dave Dollar, but right. Pat Bev is chomping at the bit, especially after he was clowning last year during the season opener. He was talking in the locker room. He's talking on the floor saying, Steph ain't got his boys yet. Steph right now coming in on fire. What will Pat Bev, Pat Bev do against uh, Steph Curry? We'll talk more about that later in this show. Of course, the Warriors outsiders coming up. Congratulations to Drew Schiller. He's not here tonight. Kara Furt yeah, will be Drew, congratulations. In. Congratulations, Drew. Drew. And we'll talk about the Clippers here. Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Ty Lue, Pat Bev, Sweet Lou. They're all coming to town. We'll talk about this upcoming matchup between the Warriors and Clippers and our Warriors postgame live. Presented by